Okay, it's Sunday. Uh, 15 items in this auction. And we're going to start with uh, three points. These are going to be sold together. Uh, G01. This is the G series auction. Okay, these were a little bit too small to have to as knives, uh, well, they're not that small, but uh, smaller than the ones I was using. Um, let's see, for example, I was using this size on some of mine, some of the knives. So I'm just going to offer these together as one group, G01, to start things out. This is a nice color yellow. A little bit kind of translucent. This one is more translucent. Yeah. So I just made a bunch in this style of different sizes. So I'll offer these together. Nothing wrong with them. Just a little bit too small for the knives this time. This auction is going to be mainly the knives that I've been working on. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to offer these alligator gar scales. This one's G02. There's a dozen in this bag and a dozen in this bag. So G02 and G03. Alligator gar scales cleaned and bleached. If you hadn't seen these before, they're pretty cool. They were used by Native Americans to make arrowheads, or they made arrowheads out of them either completely natural or slightly modified uh, ground down to flatten them a little bit or whatever okay so that's a a dozen in each bag g02 and g03 okay let's see all right so this auction like i said is mostly knives uh i'm going to start out with the the one i just showed it's a kind of a a generic one right i've got some i didn't uh do much decorating or anything on uh I'll start out with the generic ones this is a poplar handle uh black latex no not latex acrylic black acrylic craft paint uh, i think this is a flat it's uh, this brand here. It's got at the local store. Uh, most of these are Texas Chert stone. Uh, this one is a heat treat, I think. Let's see. No, nope, this one's raw. This is a raw, like Owl Creek Chert. It is wrapped with sinew, but painted black. Uh, modern hot melt glued, black hot melt. Okay, let's see if I have my tape measure. I do have it. Okay. To give you an idea of the overall length, about eight inches. Okay, that's the first one. This one is uh, G04. Okay. Next one, G05. These are all going to be very similar. There's four of these that are not finished. This is, just has a light, very light coat of boiled linseed oil. It's still uh, rough. I used 40 grit sandpaper on my belt sander. And it uh, didn't do very much except paint the top here and mount, mount the point to it, wrap it with sinew and paint, paint this top part black. Translucent chert, Texas type. Uh, I think this one is a raw, raw chert. Yeah, high quality raw chert. So you can finish this out as you as you wish. You know, you can put wax or whatever. I didn't finish all of these out. I thought I was going to have time to to make some elaborate designs on these. So I got four like this. 
I've got, and then I've got some that are painted, but you'll see. All right, G05. Next one, G06. Very similar in style. I don't know if I measured the last one. This one's about seven and a little over seven inches. Let's see. The last one before this one. The sun's encroaching in on us. I'm gonna have to hurry up. I'm filming this in the van and the sun is uh starting to show it show up here. Okay. G06 poplar handle. Most of these are Texas chert blades. G07. Oh, the sun is good for the translucency, right? We can see it pretty good. Nice high quality stone. I can't remember if that's heat treat or raw. If it's heat treated, it's lightly heat treated. It's not a it's not one of those rocks that you can heat to extremely high temperature. Alright. I guess I I could call this a generic or a finish on your own type. Okay. Uh, now I got some with painted uh, sinew and painted handles. They're all going to be the same paint scheme. G08. It's a yellow acrylic or what they call yellow oxide. It's this color here. And uh, it's like a barn red color on the sinew but it's painted over black so it, it's a uh, it's not you know a solid color you kind of you kind of can see the black through the through the paint but I kind of like it that way it look, makes it look more rustic or whatever And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to burnish these. Uh, all the handles will be kind of burnished lightly in just a light coat of boiled linseed oil. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of a... Uh, let's see. Let me start that over. On the bare wood, it's a light coat of linseed oil, boiled linseed oil, right? And I burnish it. On the paint, I'm not going to put oil over the paint. I'm just going to burnish uh, and remove the... I try to remove a lot of the fuzz that lifts up with uh, poplar. Poplar is very fuzzy when you paint it or when you uh, put any kind of water or moisture on it. The, the fibers lift up so it gets fuzzy and uh, bumpy, right? So I'm just going to burnish that down, try to cut most of that down uh, with a, another piece of wood that I burnish with. But it's still going to feel kind of rough and it's going to be a flat looking non-shiny paint. Let's see if I can cover that window up. Oh, the direct sunlight is getting in the way. Let's see. A little bit better, I think. Okay, yeah. Okay, so oh, that was G08, G08. I think I measured it already. If not, you can just ask me in the comment section and I'll tell you. Uh, G09, same paint scheme. Uh, this is a barn red color. Let's see. Yeah, this is the red that I used on the sinew wrap but it starts out as black i just paint the whole top black 
Okay. We got some translucency on this chert. A little bit. Okay. A little bit of cortex on this. This is a heat treat. I remember this one. This is a heat treated Texas chert. Okay, probably should be showing, trying to show those flake scars a little bit better. Anyway, hopefully, hopefully you can see it. Okay, G10. Uh, another heat treat, Texas chert heat treat. Some of the cortex left on the blade. A little bit of translucency. Okay. Let's see. G11. Uh, let's see. This one. A little bit of cortex. Uh, I'm not sure. This might be raw. I think this one is a raw chert. High quality. As far as as far as the napping goes, this one was pretty easy to nap. The type of chert. Okay. And all these handles are poplar uh, for this batch, right? The next batch, I'm going to start using Osage and Mulberry and other woods. Okay, I think we're coming up on the last three. Let's see, I've got this one here where I painted the handle a different color. I painted the, the brown. Um, actually, I think this is uh, burnt sienna, if I'm not mistaken. That's the name of the color. What, are they, what is this one? G12. G12. Okay. Some of the cortex left on this blade. This is a raw Owl Creek type chert. But it's not the black stuff, it's it's a gray. It's a gray Owl Creek, same as the other ones. I think I have three that are this Owl Creek stuff. Naps very easily in the raw state. Uh, comes in, in various tones. This one is the gray, charcoal gray color. I didn't do very much painting on this one. I just uh, painted the handle, a little stripe across here, and then, then the sinew wrap painted that barn red color. It's going to be a little rustic when you get it. When I when I uh, burnish this down, I burnish this down a little bit to get rid of the fuzz. It's going to remove some of the paint too, like right there. But I'm just going to ship it like that. Okay. Let's see. Two more items. This one here. Uh, this one's a translucent root beard chert. This is G13. Okay. Uh, this is just the yellow paint that I showed earlier. Barn red on the sinew. Poplar handle. And the ink here is uh, from a calligraphy pen. It's a true black ink. I did not use Sharpie on, on any of this. Uh, Sharpie it tends to be shiny and has a, like a purple sheen to it, which I don't like for this kind of stuff. It's fine for other applications like, uh, you know, writing stuff, but not for not for these. So this is uh, 
This is a calligraphy pen to make these lines. And I just made vertical lines. It tends to bleed into the wood when you do it across this way, lines across that way or diagonally. You'll see the bleeding into the wood uh, unless you unless you seal the wood. Now I can seal the wood and then do a lot of marker type decorations with the calligraphy marker or calligraphy pen. It's a felt tip calligraphy pen marker. Okay. <laughs> um, it's not one of those calligraphy pens where it's got a, a metal tip that I use that I dip into ink or that kind of thing or, or a fountain pen. No, this is a, a felt tip calligraphy pen marker. Anyway, uh, just so you know, in case you want to do it yourself and you don't know what I used. Uh, and you can also add more decorations if you want. Okay. Um, let's see. I thought I had 15 items, but I'm only going to have one more. I only have one more item. No, I got, I got, I got two more items. Never mind. All right, so that's G13. All right, G14 is this one here. Uh, you know, same paint colors and everything. The only thing that's different on this one is I etched this into the wood. I scratched away the paint and, and actually etched this design into the wood. So it exposes the natural color of the wood underneath the paint. Now, I can do more of this, but it takes me a while. But if, if you guys like it, I'll, I'll do more with etching. And this can be done with a stone tool. I, I did this with a, with a uh, carving knife. But I can do it with a, uh, what they call a perforator or a graver, right? I can engrave this with a stone tool. So I might start doing that. And I'll let you know what type of tool I used. And I might do a video on how I scratch it in there. If I use a stone tool, I'll show you how I do it. But that's all there is. There's no finish on this. It's just paint. Uh, burnish down to get rid of the fuzz on here. And then I scratch this in. A uh, little snake symbol. Okay. And regular Texas chert, I think this one is raw. Um, not very translucent. Yeah. But interesting, an interesting material. Not easy to nap, but it's it feels really sharp. Okay, so that's G14. The last item. Uh, the last item I'm going to offer is a half dozen arrow shafts in the preliminary stage okay now these I harvested uh, last month toward the end of the month right on a trail uh, these I don't know what what they are because like they don't the plant didn't have any leaves on it right so I don't know what they are but it's some kind of dogwood probably very similar to red osier it might even be green twig osier instead of the red twig dogwood it might be the green twig dogwood anyways very lightweight i got some stats on here lightweight in terms of the actual weight and feel of the dogwood a lot of dogwood is heavy and dense this is lightweight um uh, let's see let's see if i can have a view of the pith here uh, it does not have much pith at all. So that, that tells me the wood is lightweight. Okay. So this spring when the leaves start coming in and all that, I'll find out what kind of wood this is. I'll go back to the same little stand. I got this pretty much off of one plant. This is a half a dozen. This is six uh, shoots. Peeled, straightened with no heat, no heat yet. I got some notes on here. Uh, sanded with 40 grit, no heat. All right. Uh, diameter at the far end is 516. Diameter at the fat end ranges from 
13 30 seconds and 7 sixteenths. Uh, total length 29 and a quarter, uh, 40 32 grains for this particular one, but it ranges between 456, yeah, that one, and 404. I have one really lightweight one for some reason in here. Anyway, you know, natural wood varies quite a bit. So I am going to offer this to anyone that wants it. Uh, these have only been drying for two or three weeks. So they need to be dried longer. Maybe a couple months more will dry them out. As long as you keep them in a an area where uh, airflow, get the air flowing around this. Uh, I've got elastic bands tightly wrapped around to keep it straight as it dries. And But I periodically check. I've got a, I got several batches like this going, but this is the first batch, uh, the oldest one. And I think it's dry enough to sell it, uh, and nothing has gone wonky about these shafts. Let's see if I can show. Uh, I can't really show down how straight they are. They're straightened as much as I can. And then I bundle them to try to keep them straight. And I periodically check them. Uh, and then I didn't I didn't spine these because I, I they increase in spine over time, right? So I don't know the spine weight, like if they're 50 pound or 60 pound or 40 pound spine weight, because it, it changes as it dries. So uh, I'm gonna I weigh these every so often right and when they stop losing weight that's when I spine them okay that's when I take them on the spine tester and I figure out what spine they are and then I'll just sand these down when I'm making my own arrows I'll sand them down until they reach the spine that I'm looking for okay so a lot of these are going to start at about 60 pounds uh, you can tell by the diameters pretty much and if you're experienced with uh, red osier dogwood or red twig dogwood, if you have experience with that type of material, this is very similar to that stuff. Or if you've used aspen, or uh, this is heavy, this is lighter than birch, so it's like an aspen or something. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else would be a lightweight, very light color wood, but. That's it. It's it's very similar to red osier dogwood uh, in terms of properties. Uh, the knot, the yeah, the knots, uh, the pith, everything. Okay, I think I've spent enough time on that one. All right. So uh, again, the description has the rules of the auction. If you guys have any questions, you can ask me. Uh, try not to wait till the last minute to bid. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be working on more knives. Uh, if you have requests for the next auction, please let me know. Uh, I know I've got requests for flint napping tools. I'm going to try to put up some flint napping tools in these auctions. I'm going to offer more materials uh, and stuff that's not related to the actual napping of these points. Because i got to cool it with the flint napping. My wrists and my... Uh, eyesight my back all that stuff I got to make sure I don't overdo it uh, I mean it's not really debilitating right it's just it it, uh, it prevents me from doing it on a regular basis I don't want to burn out and not have any flint nappings for a month or two while I recover and then go back to napping and then burn out again now I want a steady flow of nappings and uh, but I can't overdo it, so I'm going to offer other items in the auctions like arrow shoots, uh, maybe some bowstrings, maybe some uh, what did I say, uh, flint napping tools, and that kind of thing. So just let me know what else you might want to uh, have offered in these auctions, and uh, I'll try to my best to see if I can do it. All right, that's it, and good luck.